The month of Ramadan is that in which was revealed the Quran, a guidance for the people, and clear proofs of guidance and criterion. Just as ayah alone is enough for us to establish the connection between the Quran and Ramadan. In this ayah, Allah not just describes Ramadan as the month in which the Quran was revealed, but He goes ahead to describe the Quran as a guidance for the people and clear proofs of guidance and criterion. Therefore, for us to benefit from the Qur'an, we need to connect with it. It's very unfortunate that many Muslim households nowadays have several Qur'ans and the only form of respect that they give to the book is put it on top of a top shelf for it to collect dust and that's it. And this is very faulty and wrong because the true form of respect for you to give to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to seek guidance by it because it is the purpose for which it was sent. This is a book of guidance. So for us to receive guidance from the book, it's important that we connect with the Quran. Which is why in this video, I will be sharing five ways in which you can connect to the Quran during Ramadan and beyond. By connecting to the Quran, you will not only be able to reap the rewards, but you will also be able to attain taqwa and it is very applicable during Ramadan because attaining taqwa is the key purpose of fasting. The first way in which you can connect to the Quran is by istima, which refers to listening to the Quran. And this is not just one of the less energy intensive ways in which you can reap rewards but when you are feeling tired from other acts of ibadah that are more intensive instead of relaxing and engaging in worldly affairs you can switch to listening to the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran <laughs> So when the Qur'an is recited, then listen to it and pay attention that you may receive mercy. So we learn that listening to the Qur'an is a source by which we can receive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. And this is one of the ibadah that you can do while you are doing other work. For an example, you can listen to the Qur'an while you're cooking, doing your laundry, cleaning the house, while you're shoveling, etc. And there are multiple platforms online that you can use to listen from a variety of Qur'an, from a variety of reciters of the Qur'an, and I will be linking some of them in the description below. And it's even a good idea for you to switch between the different reciters without sticking to your favorite because that will not just let you appreciate the different ways of reciting the Quran, but I have noticed that different reciters highlight on different parts of the recitation and that can open doors for deeper reflection on the ayat of the Qur'an and of course this is an added bonus if you know Arabic and if you can actually understand the recitation. If not, you can always refer to a translation simultaneously but if your eyes are tired and you don't want to look at a translation then just closing your eyes and listening to the Qur'an is sufficient because listening to the Qur'an alone fills your soul with a lot of tranquility, peace, it's so therapeutic that I can't describe it in words that you need to experience it. And that brings me to the conclusion of point number one, that is listening to the Qur'an. And that brings me to the second way in which you can connect to the Qur'an and that is through Tilawah, referring to the recitation of the Qur'an. 
and this is one of the means of connecting to the Quran in which majority of the people engage in especially in Ramadan and the reward for reciting the Quran is so immense and this has been beautifully captured in a hadith of the Prophet where he said whoever recites a letter from the book of Allah he will be credited with a good deed and a good deed gets a tenfold reward I do not say that Alif Lam Mim is one letter but Alif is a letter, Lam is a letter and Mim is a letter and it's so great just by reciting Alif Lam Mim the first verse of Surah Baqarah we have already earned 30 rewards just imagine how much more reward will we be missing out if we are not really striving to recite the Quran as much as we can during Ramadan and talking about Talawa, one cannot do justice to this topic without focusing on Tajweed. What does Tajweed refer to? It consists of the Makharij al huruf that is pronouncing the letters of the Arabic language from their correct articulation points. It's important that we know the Tajweed rulings because reciting the Quran with Tajweed will not only enable us to recite the Quran like the Prophet وسلم, it will also enable us to appreciate the true beauty and the richness of the Quran because the Quran is an Arabic Quran but more importantly it will also enable us to give the proper right of recitation because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran those to whom we gave the book recited as it should be recited they are the ones that believe therein the message of this ayah is very clear it not only indicates that there is a proper way in which the Quran should be recited but it also urges and encourages every individual to seek out knowledge and learn about the proper way in which the Quran should be recited so we can give the recitation its due right because in another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions <laughs> And recite the Quran aloud in a slow, pleasant tone and style. So we learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects us to recite the Quran beautifully. And this is also mentioned in hadith of the Prophet where he said, He who does not recite the Quran in a pleasant tone is not of us. And in another place he says, Beautify the Quran with your voices, whose sweet voice increases the beauty of the Quran. So all this emphasizes on the importance of giving the due right of the recitation by following the rulings of the Jweed, as well as reciting it in a beautiful tone. Having said that, I know that not everyone finds it easy. It's extremely difficult for an individual and for this, I want to remind you of another hadith of the Prophet وسلم, where he said, Were really the one who recites the Quran beautifully, smoothly, and precisely, he will be in the company of the noble and obedient angels. And as for the one who recites with difficulty, stammering or stumbling through its verses, then he will have twice the reward. What? A hadith because it adds so much hope and this is something that added so much hope in my own journey as well but we need to understand that Allah does not look at how well you are reciting compared to another individual but Allah looks at you as a unique individual and he rewards you based on your sincerity and your effort so when you are learning to recite the Quran even if you are not fluent in it Firstly, you need to give yourself permission to start as a beginner. You can't start as a pro, if that even makes sense. And secondly, don't let the opinions of people or the fear of being judged stop you from embracing this journey of 
learning to recite the Quran properly. And talking about Talaba, it's very interesting. Actually, I was supposed to post this video on Wednesday, but for some reason I couldn't. And I happened to come across this video, which was posted by Sister Maryam Amir. And I highly suggest that you go ahead and watch it if you haven't watched it already. But it was this video that inspired me to recite the ayat instead of inserting a clip from another site. So with that, I would like to say that if you really want to improve your recitation and you find yourself overcome with fear, then one of the tips that I suggest is to put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His pleasure even above your fear. Because at the end of the day, we are trying to connect to the Qur'an, not to receive praises from people, but it is a means by which we can invest in our success, not just in this world, but also the hereafter. Now the question arises, how can you learn Tajweed or how can you revise your Tajweed if you already know Tajweed but you would like to brush it up? There are plenty of resources online. One of the easiest way in which you can guarantee results is by joining a course. There are plenty online again. And if you do not want to enroll in a course because you have budget issues or because you don't have the time to commit and give justice to a course that you're enrolling to, then I highly suggest seek out the free resources that are freely available in the form of apps on your phone, websites, even YouTube videos. I highly recommend listening to Brother Wissam Shahid. He has posted a lot of videos focusing on the correct Maharaj al -Huruf. The correct articulation points of the letters and it will definitely help you in improving your tajweed at this point i also want to refer you back to point number one that is listening to the quran listening to the quran is another way in which you can improve your tajweed there again there are a lot of platforms online that will give you access to innumerable recitals of the quran however i want to add that when you are listening to the Qur'an with the intention of improving your Tajweed, you choose a Qari who is focused more on the Maharaj al the correct articulation points of the letters as opposed to the melody. And if you are a beginner, two of the reciters I highly recommend are Qari Abdullah Dasbar and Qari Khalil al Husari. I will add links to their recitation in the description below. And before I conclude this topic of Tilawa, which was more on Tajweed, I feel it was only because Tajweed is very important because there is even a possibility of you distorting the meanings of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by improper pronunciation. For an example, the word Qal refers to the heart and the word kalb refers to the dog. Khalaqa refers to the creation and halaka refers to perishing, destruction. You see like total opposite meanings and there are innumerable examples that we can discuss on this subject but I hope I have done justice to encouraging you to number one start learning tajweed if you're a beginner or review your tajweed if you're somebody who already knows tajweed. The third way in which you can connect to the Qur'an is by hip, referring to the memorization of the Qur'an. By memorizing the Qur'an, you will not only have instant access to guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever you want it, even if you don't have the physical mushaf in your hand, but it's also a means in which you can attain success, not just in this world, but also the hereafter. You must have heard the famous hadith of Iqra' where that he recite and ascend. The Prophet ﷺ said, It will be said to the one who was devoted to the Qur'an, Recite and ascend, and recite carefully as you recited carefully when you were in the world. For verily, your abode will be at the place of the last verse you recite. This hadith alone is enough encouragement to push us to try to memorize the Qur'an. If you can't commit to memorizing the entire Qur'an right now, then at least a few ayat from the Qur'an. It could be even your favorite ayat. A few is better than none. 
and this concludes the third way in which you can connect to the Quran so thus far we've discussed about listening to the Quran reciting the Quran and memorizing the Quran and it's very unfortunate that majority of the people only focus on these three ways whereas the next two ways that I'm going to share with you shortly are very important and it's vital we understand the importance of it because only then can we attain true guidance from the Quran and attain success in this world and the next. The fourth way in which you can connect to the Quran is by the book, which refers to reflecting and pondering over the ayat of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, this is a blessed book which we have revealed to you, O Prophet وسلم, that they might reflect upon its verses and that those of understanding would be reminded. This ayah clearly points out that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to reflect on the verses of the Qur'an. Islam emphasizes a lot on knowledge, on ilm. And one of the ways in which you can increase your understanding, increase your knowledge of the Qur'an and the matters that it contains is by reflecting and pondering. Only then can you truly understand the grandeur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and appreciate the true beauty and the richness that his words encompasses. And when it comes to reflecting the Quran, obviously we need to be able to understand Arabic. But not all of us are Arabs and not all of us know Arabic. This does not mean that we abandon reflecting and pondering upon the verses of the Quran, but instead we should at least try to reflect and ponder using a tarjuma, using a translation of the Quran. And another tool that can help us increase the understanding of the verses so we may reflect on it deeper is using a tafsir. There are several translations of tafsir, for an example, tafsir ibn Kathir. And this point of tadabbur, reflecting on the verses of the Quran, is a point which I discussed in one of my very recent Instagram lives that I had with Sister Aisha from Malaysia. I will insert the clip here. Ramadan and Quran. Ramadan is the month of Quran. So how, what are some practical tips that inshallah you would share for people to connect with the Quran this Ramadan? Um, I think the most important part of um, when you come closer to the Quran is to actually reflect upon it and do a lot of tadabbur. Like I mentioned before, tadabbur, reflecting and pondering about the Quran is only done by a few when in fact it should be adopted by each and every one of us. Which is why at this point I would like to say previously we discussed about the importance of learning Tajweed and here I would like to emphasize on the importance of learning Arabic because no translation can do justice to the true beauty and essence of the Quran. The true Quran is in Arabic because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly points it out in many verses in the Quran itself. For an example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <laughs> Surely we have revealed it, an Arabic Quran that you may understand. There are numerous platforms and courses that you can take when it comes to understanding the language of the Quran. I will drop a few suggestions in the description below. And that brings me to the final point, the fifth way in which you can connect to the Quran and that is through Amal, which refers to the deeds. Because if you think about it, what's the point of learning Arabic, Tajweed, reciting, understanding, if the teachings of the Quran don't reflect in your life? Because the main reason as to why the guidance was sent down to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so that we may act upon it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه أولئك أولئك الذين آذاهم الله وأولئك هم أولي الألباب
ಹೌದು who listen to speech and follow the best of it those are the ones allah has guided and those are people of understanding